The feature that sets the Middle Earth series apart from other games is the Nemesis system. For those who don't know, the Nemesis system is a feature that generates random Uruk and Olokai in the open world of Mordor. These Nemesis, who can be viewed in the army screen, have a randomized and almost unique armor, weapons, personality, classes, tribes and traits. In today's video I want to take a look at that last part, their traits. The traits can be divided into two categories, the strengths and the weaknesses. And each one can be subdivided once more into four subclasses. The strengths consist of immunities, hates, class traits and bonuses. The weaknesses can be divided into mortal weaknesses, vulnerabilities, dazed by and hints. Before heading into battle, it's wise to take a look at these traits so you can optimize your chances of success. But to minimize the time you have to spend in the army screen, we'll show you the most efficient way to interpret all the information and to use it to your advantage. So with that in mind, we'll go over each subcategory one by one and we'll show you how it works. We'll give some examples and how these subcategories interact with each other. Before we start, I want to mention that I've made a Google spreadsheet on all the traits, uh, so meaning the strengths and weaknesses for all the different categories. So you can take a look at the Google spreadsheet and you have an overview of all the strengths and weaknesses, at least that I've come across so far. I'll also make a video about it later on in the week, so you can also look out for that. With that out of the way, let's start with the immunities. Immunities are, as the title implies, traits that allow the nemesis to not be harmed by any particular ability or type of attack. You can think of frostproof or immune to ranged attacks. Any nemesis can gain immunities by leveling, but they can be temporarily disabled when triggering any trait from the dazed by category. To keep it simple, triggering their fears disables their immunities for a short while. When looking at this category, you want to prevent using any abilities uh, that trigger their immunities. It's pretty simple. Uh, let's say you're using frost abilities and your nemesis is frost proof. You are probably better off switching to poison or fire abilities. Second on the list are the hates. Hates are traits that cause the nemesis to attack harder and boost their abilities like increased damage and health regeneration. Examples are enraged by fire or enraged by acrobatics. Yeah, that's an actual one. To prevent your nemesis of getting these boosts in the middle of a fight, make sure neither you nor your followers are using any abilities that trigger any hates. Following the hates is by far the biggest category, the class traits. Class traits are class, advanced class or tribe specific abilities that can be used in combat. There are class bonuses like the crossbow, defender shield or Olok strength that are unique to the class of the Uruk or Olok. Next to that, each nemesis has an advanced class. Here you can think of assassins, commanders, tanks, things like that. Each advanced class also allows the user to utilize a special ability. The assassins can, for example, ambush and strike you down quickly. Each of these advanced classes also comes with other traits like agile for the assassin class or dying command for the commander. If you want to know more about these specific abilities, Check out the Google spreadsheet. So the assassin can't have any class traits that the commander has. Besides this, they also have the tribe ability. A tribe ability is a special ability that allows them to deal a ton of damage or finish enemies off. If you want to know more about the class traits, check out our classes video. And if you want to know more about the tribe abilities, tribe weapons, check out the recent tribe traits video. Moving on to the last subcategory of the strengths, we have bonuses. Bonuses are random abilities, simple as that. It ranges from beast slayer to fire bombs or from having a gang of savages to having a flame weapon. Besides these, this category also contains the epic traits. These traits are only applied to epic or legendary nemesis. For example, we have the epic trait great strength which allows that Uruk or Oluk to deal a massive amount of damage to their opponent. As the title implies, they are pretty rare. Moving on to the weaknesses category, we'll start with the mortal weaknesses. 
completely opposite to the immunities, these are their biggest vulnerabilities. If you trigger a mortal weakness, you can make the nemesis flee in terror, or you'll kill him instantly. It's one of those two. For example, there is Terrified of Spiders, which causes the nemesis to flee when faced with spiders, or Mortally Flammable, which causes him to die instantly when fire is used on him. When fleeing, they are instantly broken, meaning they can be dominated without you first having to damage them. One thing to keep in mind is that when a nemesis gains levels, they can lose their weaknesses. For example, instead of being a mortal beast fodder, which makes them vulnerable to beast attacks, they will just be a beast fodder, which is categorized in the vulnerabilities category. This means that instead of dying instantly, it does deal heavy damage, but it doesn't kill them instantly anymore. Vulnerabilities are in that way similar to the mortal weaknesses, but instead of triggering the nemesis to flee in terror or die, it just deals heavy damage. The category after that is called Dazed By, and any traits in the Dazed By category don't necessarily make the nemesis weaker, but when used to your advantage, it can daze them. Like we mentioned, when they are dazed, it disables their immunities for the duration of the daze. And in the final category, we have the hints. Hints are similar to the vulnerabilities, except they trigger less damage. Instead of a beast dealing heavy damage, it now deals medium damage. And those are all the categories, their meanings and their interactions. In order to go about your battles, whether they are one-on-one -on -one or whether you are taking on entire fortresses, make sure to use the strengths and weaknesses of the nemesis to your advantage. If we may believe Monolith, this game is way harder than the previous one. We've made an overview of all the traits in the Google spreadsheet like I mentioned. You can see the link in the description or find it on Reddit. We'll keep updating it as we're getting closer to the release and also during the game. So you can see all the traits that are available. This is also good to keep in mind if you want to build certain followers so you know what traits you can look out for. For now, thanks for watching. Consider leaving a like if you enjoyed the video or a dislike if you didn't. In either case, leave us some constructive feedback on the video, art style, commentary and content. In case you want to stay updated, you can consider subscribing, you know how that works. And you can also click the notification bell if you want instant pop-ups when we upload. If you have any questions beside this, want to share your ideas or like we said, you want to start a discussion with us, let us know in the comment section down below. Once again, thank you for watching and we'll hopefully see you in the next video. Bye bye.